Hi, Andrew Kramer here with another exciting tutorial. No, really, this one is exciting. What we have is these two uh, gentlemen walking forward and boom! Okay, these guys get blown to bits, right? Well, not yet, but that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create an explosion that kinda just makes these guys fly out of this world. By the way, this uh, guy on the left here is uh, Patrick Otten, and uh, he was a very helpful guy in this whole process too, so definitely wanna thank him. And of course, the famous Sam Loya. Let's get started. We're gonna take the walking green screen footage, drag it out to the composition area, and let's get keying. So with the layer selected, I'm gonna choose Effect, King, and Key Light. Okay, effects come up. We're gonna choose this green here. Zoom in, and we're gonna do a few setups. So, down in the screen matte controls, we're gonna set the clip black amount to 25, a little less than normal, and the white to about 35. And the reason we're doing this is because we have some shadows here, and it's difficult to get rid of them sometimes by just clipping um, them out without getting rid of some important stuff like his leg. I definitely want to point this out is his pants uh, are pretty much green. I mean, they're reflecting the ground here, which is basically making them very green. So we want to make sure to be careful about that. And to fix that, we're actually going to increase the screen gain amount to about 115. So we're going to change the screen pre-blur to... 2.5 seems like a pretty good number and just to check our edges we don't want this white edge so let's change the soft color to hard color and the replace color to a dark green that's pr maybe a little grayer on the green there okay so that's pretty good except now we have this white edge which we're going to get rid of by shrinking the mat about one pixel very good and also the edge is a little sharp, so we're gonna make the softness of it about 0.4 pixels. All right, let's work with this, and uh, if we need to make some changes, we will. Now, let's get rid of these outer area here. We're gonna make a garbage mask, and we're gonna select the pen tool, and we wanna keep as much of the inside stuff as possible because they come very close to the edge, if not out of it. So we wanna try to keep as much of it as possible. So we're gonna click right in here, there, here, 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 and I'll just top it off. Back to the project. We're going to take the background image, which is this image 9400. Alt home to take it to the zero marker. And let's, uh, let's see if we can scale this thing down to a little bit better perspective. Ooh, that's cool. Maybe... Maybe like, maybe there. I think that's pretty impressive. It's widescreen also, we can check it that way. I like it. So next step, let's color correct these guys to match the background. Well, we could color correct the background to match these guys, but the background looks cooler. It's not so video. So let's select the walking guys and choose effect, color correction, levels and we've done this before we're going to change the red channel to add some green into the shadows red input black and down to the blue channel and add some yellow to the whites all right so that looks pretty good now let's darken it just a little bit but not too much Now the next thing we gotta do is bring the explosion in. So let's take this explosion movie, which was created using some particle illusion effects. Uh, check them out, wondertouch.com, if I'm not mistaken. Now let's, uh, let's go ahead and time this animation up. So these guys get blown up, explosion, boom, they get blown all right. So if this isn't lined up, we want it to be about at two seconds, 20 frames. Now let's get rid of this black. So with the layer selected, I'm going to toggle the F4 to the transfer modes, and we're going to switch it to add. And that will kind of give it a hotter, kind of fiery look. But we have one little problem, that is this footage is kind of grainy. So let's clip the grain away in the darker areas by choosing effect, color correction, levels, and just moving the input black over. And that just gets rid of the grain because it's so close to being uh, all the way black, which gets keyed out or eliminated by the additive mode. 
Now, this explosion looks like a little weenie explosion. We want this thing to be big and huge and pretty darn big. So we're going to duplicate this layer and we're going to offset it just a few frames. Then we're going to take this top explosion, hit S for scale, and we're going to scale it up big time. Yeah, just big. 300. So we just want it to kind of be in a succession. So boom, boom. And we'll even duplicate it one more time for good measure so that the end of it kind of stays on. Fiery. Uh-oh. We got this big shadow here. So let's see if we can get rid of that. I'm going to go to the walking layer. Let's increase this to about 120. And let's play with this a little bit. All right. That should do... Uh, and you'll see why uh, when we start adding in these other effects. So let's uh, let's go and just preview this from here. All right, I mean, it's pretty good. You know, I mean, these guys get exploded, but uh, come on, this isn't uh, this isn't land of the lost. So let's uh, let's enhance this a little bit. So first of all, as great of a job as these guys did, and and they did, we want these guys to really, get blown back. So, I mean, these guys kind of just drop to the floor. You know, if you were there, it was pretty impressive, but, you know, this is cinema. I mean, we want this thing to be huge. So, let's make, let's go ahead and give them a digital push. Let's see if we can enhance their jump here. So, I'm going to go just before they get flying back. So, just about here. I'm going to select the layer, hit P to bring up the position properties, and hold down Shift and hit S to bring up the scale properties. I'm going to turn both of the stopwatches on here to set a keyframe, move forward, maybe about here, and scale this up. Maybe 300 again. Yeah, boom. And let's even move their frame up so it kind of shoots them back and up in the air. Boom, off the ground, you know. Now, whenever you do scale properties, um, Let's bring up the graph view. Fit this is it's a very, it's a linear movement. So in real life, things that go flying at the camera don't come at you at a linear motion. They actually come at you in an exponential fashion. Which basically, as it gets closer to your face, it gets a whole lot bigger. So as these guys approach our face or the camera, we want to make it seem a little bit faster as it gets closer to us. So instead of using the linear mode, we're going to make it an exponential scale. So we're going to select both of these keyframes, right click, choose keyframe assistance, exponential scale. Some of you are probably wondering, how do I get to that? Well, you have to have two keyframes selected that are linear keyframes. So like a position has more, you get the idea. All right, now what do we got to do? We gotta add some motion blur. So let's turn the motion blur switch on for this layer and for the composition. And let's just preview this and see if our motion looks okay. Okay. All right, I see a little timing off here and I think I want this explosions to come in a little bit faster. So I'm gonna select all three of them and just move them over a couple of frames. And let's check that out. Yeah, much better, much better. Now, the next thing I want to do is add some glow. So I'm going to choose Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and I'm going to go Effects, Stylize, Glow. Now, this is going to be great. So we're going to change color B to like an orange color, like a fiery orange color. And we're also going to change the glow colors to A and B colors so that it's sampling from these two colors instead of the actual colors of the composition. Now... We need to change the glow threshold up a little bit so that it only affects the fiery pixels or the brighter pixels. So maybe about 90%. And let's make the radius a lot more. And make the intensity maybe 1.9. By setting the glow on an adjustment layer, when we brighten it up, it'll cover over the tops of all the layers, which is a very, very cool effect that kind of makes it seem like the fire is coming around them or engulfing them, if you will. All right, so let's see how this looks. Yeah, that really takes them. Um, let's go ahead and tone this down just a little bit, maybe maybe there, and increase the glow amount so that we can kind of see them a little bit. 
All right, that definitely makes a big improvement. So now the other thing I want to do is make them kind of light up. So with their layer selected, I'm going to choose Effects, Color Correction Levels, and I'm going to set the stopwatch for the histogram to keyframe it. Hit U on the keyboard to bring up that keyframe. Move forward to about here and just blow our layer out some. Up the gamma some, maybe about there. Go to the, yeah, the blue channel and add some yellow in it and the red channel and add some red. All right, that's pretty cool. Now another thing we can do is degrain this footage. And to do that, we select the layer, choose Effect, Noise and Grain, Remove Grain. And we want to put the grain before everything. Uh, usually you want to remove the grain before anything else. And we want to change it from Preview to Final Output. Turn on the Temporal Filtering and add the Motion Sensitivity to about 0.96. And what that's going to do is look at the frames before and after and compare them to make sure that they are close enough to kind of remove the grain from. So that's what we could do to enhance this zoomed look. But for the most part, I don't think it's going to matter. So uh, we're going to shut it off just because it does take a while to render. Moving on to the next step, however. Well, first of all, let's go back to the levels adjustment and let's just make it a little bit more white because we, we still have this really dark contrasted black. And let's go ahead and change the black output, and that'll just, that'll really sell it. All right, let's preview this, what we have so far. All right, pretty cool. One thing though I did see is I want this fire to come up from a little bit higher. So I'm gonna select these fire layers, hold down shift, just move them up a little bit. You know, like it's coming from down the hall or, or whatever. Now the cool thing though is because this is an adjustment layer, we can move this fire wherever we want and it will actually make the glow go wherever it needs to go. So it's very handy and very dynamic in that fashion. So it's definitely a cool effect. Um, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, this explosion, it could be used for, you know, in a building, in a hall, um, you know, in a car explosion or a van or a truck or, or a car or, you know, any type of automobile. Now, we're missing one thing here, and that is the camera shake, okay? When you have a big old explosion like this, the camera is gonna shake. Just like that. Well, kinda like that. Um, to assist us with the camera shake, I am going to add in a sound effect, and that is this explosion wave. Bring it down here, hit LL on the keyboard to bring up the waveform. And now there's two parts of the sound effect. We kind of have a fly-in and then the explosion. So let's time the explosion part of it up to about there. And let's take a listen. Okay, let's see what we have. What do we got to do next? Add that camera shake. Now, we could make a null object and link all these layers, but that's a lot of work. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take this composition and first let's name it Explosion Comp and let's pre-compose this into a new composition. So I'm going to take this composition, drag it into the new comp button, it opens it up and it's right inside here. So I'm going to make a new null object and a null object is basically a layer you add transform properties to and those transform properties can then be parented to other layers. So this layer, we're going to go to the explosion about here, hit P, bring up the position property, turn on the stopwatch, set a keyframe, move forward to the end of the explosion, set another keyframe. Now we're going to select both of these keyframes and bring up the wiggler. Window, the wiggler. The wiggler is basically a component that's going to add random motion to intermediate keyframes in a set of keyframes. So I'm going to select these two keyframes and I want to make some adjustments here. First of all, I want to make it happen 24 times per second. So it's 24 frames per second. We're going to have a keyframe set every frame, basically. Now, the magnitude, maybe 25, so that it shakes about 25 pixels. And the noise type, we want it to be jagged, so that it's a sharp, violent shake. Now, let's hit Apply. And if we look at the little null object layer here, you see it's just going to town. Now, you can also get null objects to play in real time if they're by themselves and any other wireframe frames for that matter. Well, next thing we gotta do is link these layers up. So I'm gonna take this little pick whip, 
and link it to the null layer. Mind you, I have the position and time just before the explosion because if you parent the layer while it's in the middle of the explosion, when you come back, you'll see that you're offset here because it's all relative to the point in time you're at. So make sure you're before the animation or in this case after the animation before you set the parent up. So drag the little pick whip, let it go, and it automatically sets itself. You can also select the layer from this list. So shakes it up, looking good, and let's turn on some motion blur for the layer and the composition. Now if you've seen any of my other tutorials, you've seen how to fix this problem, which is the edges without having to enlarge our frame. So we're going to select this layer, and we're going to choose Effect, Stylize, Motion Tile. And the motion tile basically will repeat the edge pixels beyond itself, so we can mirror the edges. Output width 125. Since 25 is our magnitude, it can't go beyond that. Hit OK. And so that just fills in the data, which you know you can get away with in a situation like this. Very cool. Now if I move the position keyframes over, that's not a problem. There's another little effect that I want to add here, because everything is so static here that it almost seems like you're waiting for an effect. I've seen this a lot, and that is to add a slight random movement to the overall image, kind of like a law and order, you know, handheld camera type of feel. So let's create a new null object, and let's add some randomness to it. So I'm going to hit I on the keyboard to go to the beginning of the layer. I'm going to hit P to bring up the position. I'm going to set the keyframe by clicking the stopwatch. I'm going to go to the end of it by hitting O on the keyboard, setting a keyframe, then selecting the position name to select both of the keyframes. Now in the wiggler options, let's change it to smooth. Let's make the frequency 3 and the magnitude say 2. Or better yet, 2 and 2. Hit apply and now we have just this soft random mo motion here. Let's go ahead and parent this null object to this null object. So that this one is following the movement of this one, which is slight, and then it has its own properties, and then this one will also follow the properties of basically these ones combined. So, whoa. So if we play this back, whoa. All right, so I hope this tutorial's uh, showing you some cool things. And all right, hang on just a second. I got to show you one more thing. Can I show you one more thing? You guys, just okay. Take a break, but come right back. Okay, now that you're back, let's go ahead and uh, let me show you this this other thing. All right, we've all seen the Matrix, right? You know, at the end of the movie where he he flexes his muscles and the walls behind him kind of, you know warp in as if they're being affected by his strength. That's how I felt. But anyway, we're going to create a similar effect, and that is kind of a shock wave as if this explosion kind of sends off a shock wave before the explosion actually set off. And kind of a cool way we can probably get this effect is to duplicate this layer, which is the background layer, and let's go and shut these other layers off for now. And what we want to do is basically make the edges warp out as the effect is taken on. So let's go ahead and mask the ground out of it because these guys are standing on the ground so we don't want it to move. All right, let's set a few points to take the ground out. Okay, and let's select M on the keyboard, subtract the ground from it, feather it maybe five pixels, and as you can see, our layer is everything but the ground. Now, how does this help us achieve the effect? Well, I will show you. First thing we need to do is create a displacement map. So we want the walls to kind of warp outward as the effect comes in. So let's create a new composition and we'll set it widescreen just like everything else here and we'll choose layer, new solid and we'll make a black solid first. Then we'll make a new white solid, which will be the displacement positive side, and we're going to create a mask. It's about this big, and we'll make the mask in the center of the composition, so like that. And let's hit F on the keyboard and feather it just a little bit. Now let's thin out this mask a little bit. 
That looks pretty good. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to make this white thing kind of fly this way. On both sides. So we need one to go this way and one to go this way. So let's just set one up first. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this frame and paste it in here as kind of a reference while we, while we work on this effect. So this will be about here. And I'm going to set a position keyframe and a scale keyframe. And I actually want to scale it, thin it out some actually. Whoops. Turn off the masks. Thin it out. Move forward and just shoot it off the edge here. And then scale it up a little bit so that it looks as it's getting bigger when it gets towards the camera. And then I'm just going to duplicate the layer, Control D and then go to the ends of the keyframe by hitting U to bring up the keyframes and just moving it off to the other side. Then just shutting this layer off, going to the beginning and moving this over to about here. So if we look at them together, they just kind of move off. Now this is just way too slow. So let's select these end keyframes and just move it in. Still a little slow, but I think it will work. Let's set some easy ease keyframes on the beginning so that it seems to go faster towards the end. And let's speed it up some more. I want this to be very quick. All right, I believe that, I believe that. Now let's go and shut off this reference layer so that we just see this. And let's set two keyframes for the opacity. I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard to bring up the opacity parameters, stopwatch to keyframe it, move forward just a few frames and set another keyframe, go back to the beginning ones and set the opacity to zero. All right, so that you see it kind of shoot off. Now I'm gonna go to composition, composition settings, call this displacement and then back to the project and the original composition. Now I'm gonna take this displacement drag it down by this layer and time it up just before the explosion so that it finishes just as the explosion does, which is right about here. Now, with this layer selected, which is the layer that only has the walls in it, I'm gonna choose Effect, Distort, and Displacement Map. All right, now we need to set the Displacement Map to look at the Displacement Composition, which is here, and we want to stretch the map to fit the area and we also want to increase the amount of the effect. So let's go ahead and just increase the displacement to say 20 for both of the parameters here. So as you see the effect just kind of warps down the line here and if we turn the explosions on It'll warp down just as it explodes. And we can even move the displacement layer over so that it happens just before the explosion. So it just shoots off this wave just as it blows to bits. All right, let's go to this composition and check it out. Better yet, better yet, let's create a new composition. Let's take this final comp here, make a new composition, make it a standard DV one so that we can uh, output this when we're done to the TV and just drag this composition out to it. Alt home to the beginning. You can see it's a widescreen so it goes off the edges but we're gonna hit scale, scale it down 75%. Nicely letterboxes it. And if we turn all of our layers back on, go back to our final comp. That's looking pretty good, right? Well, what if we went over to the effects and presets got these Film Magic Pro settings and applied the famous Green Easy one. Let's bring down the in luminance so that it's not too dark since the alley is already pretty dark. By the way, you can get these Film Magic Pro settings from videocopilot.net. All right, let's uh, let's check it out, okay? All right, pretty cool. By the way, let's change the composition settings to uh, 23.976 frames per second.
All right, pretty cool. And uh, by the way, you can do this tutorial without the Film Magic Pro. Um, I don't recommend it, though. All right, you guys, so thank you so much for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm Andrew Kramer.